welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we're gonna to introduce you to a program where if you have waterfront property, or even if you don't, you can help restore the health of the bay and the health of oysters, one of our wonderful economic and, and delicacy resources that we have here in Hampton and beyond. My guests are Heather North from the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, and volunteer Claire Newberg from Clean City Commission and, and who does this in her own yard. Welcome. Thanks Thank you. Um, you know, farming oysters sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> Claire, you do it, is it? How much does this take of someone's time? No, it, it really isn't a lot of work. I say it's my favorite kind of gardening because the weeding is probably is a whole lot easier than what you'd have to do in your yard. And uh, I would say, you know, it may take you a couple hours a month, really, is all it's going to take you oh, wow. to, to manage the oysters. And so lots of people could be doing this. Do you know how many people are doing it in Hampton? In Hampton, yeah, we have over um, 50 gardeners now in Hampton, which is great because last year we actually had eight. So we oh, have man. seen a, a, oh, a, gina a, a ginormous... Um, Increase in Claire, you sparked some of that, right? Like you nudged some of your neighbors. Well, I'd like to hope I did. <laughs> yes. Why is it important? Why do we need to grow oysters? Why isn't that just, you know, happening like it always used to happen in the Bay for the last, you know, thousands of years? So this is a way that we can engage citizens who um, want to get involved, want to do their part to help clean the bay, improve water quality, and just to um, want to help, you know, engage their kids too and educate their kids or their grandkids or neighbors. And um, this is a great way also to help them actually clean up their their backyards because we can't obviously build a reef in every little small creek and tributary. Um, where, but this in their backyard, the small cage is like having a small oyster reef. Mm -hmm. Well, so let's talk about what oysters do because, you know, you might want to raise crabs because you like crabs better, but oysters do really special things for the water. Yes, yeah, so they are extremely wonderful filter feeders. So uh, a single adult oyster in the summer months can filter up to 50 gallons of water a day. So and that's just one oyster. And what does that mean, filter? So they're, they're cleaning the bay. So they are, um, as they're bringing the water in, they're obviously eating. And then also they're um, separating the excess nutrients and sediments that are suspended in the water column and um, patch, packaging that up into actually small little bundles and depositing it onto the, the bay floor in the benthic environment where it then can be decomposed. And otherwise, that's the sediment and things that are suspended is too light to be, um, to be you know, put on the bottom by itself. So it actually helps improve and clean the water. And then, like I said, then the benthic environment can then decompose it. And So it literally takes the water around your yard mm -hmm. and cleans it up. Right. right. So you are, I guess, then not just being, you know, altruistic, you're making it safer, healthier for your kids <laughs> or your neighbors, for people right here. And then it, of course, then spreads throughout. And if everybody does it, those benefits begin to multiply. Yes. So how do you do it? What, what do you do if you, you know, raise your hand after this show and call in and say, OK, I, I want to I be an oyster farmer? So usually during the month of June is when we have our events, um, we, but we can still offer um, oyster gardening setups for the rest of the summer as long as we have oysters available. And so basically new gardeners would come to a seminar or speak with us privately. We kind of would teach them everything and more they need to know about <laughs> oysters and how to take care of them. Um, we joke that they're one step above a pet rock because <laughs> oh, really- that's funny. They kind of look like rocks. Right. Yeah. Everything they need to survive is in the water. So as long as you keep those oysters in the water, they're happy and healthy. You don't have to feed them or take them out for a walk or anything crazy like that. <laughs> um, so it's the easiest pet you, you can have. And basically what you're doing is we will give you a cage similar to this. Um, we'll really that small? Yes. Is what you start with? Yep. Okay. So we give you two cages. The first one will be about a third of the way full with what is called spat on shell, which is um, an example is like this. So this is a spat. Okay, I'm going to get you to hold that and see sure. if we can zoom in um, on that at all. So a spat is just another word for a baby oyster. So these are all the little spat, they're all the little baby oysters, and they are seated onto a single shell that we've received through our shell recycling program. And we'll get to that in a minute, okay. Okay. And then, so the gardeners will get, um, like I said, about 800 to 1,000 of these little baby oysters in their cages, 
and then they grow them for us. It's like a foster program, so they grow them for us for a year, and then they'll return them one year later at one of our Roundup events, where then we'll, at that point, you know, they're getting bigger and heavier and hard, a little bit harder to maintain. So we take them and we'll plant them onto a sanctuary reef, a local sanctuary reef. So for example, for Hampton gardeners, we'll, we'll take them and plant them onto a, a reef in the Hampton River. So these came, Claire, these came from you, right? Yes, the, this, this was grown, this is one year of growth. So last summer, oh my God, these you guys the were a little that smaller. By the end of the That's year. why you get That's two your to separate. Things, yeah, okay. As they grow, you separate them. Mm -hmm. wow. And um, I think what's neat about growing the oysters is you're not only you're growing oysters, but you're providing habitat. So when I pull my cage out. I find fish, I find crabs, which I have to take out because they like eating oysters. Yeah, they would. But I they find, could go in there I and open them. I yeah. find a whole, a whole lot of other things that are enjoying the habitat that even this little cage provides. So with the hope that that will help provide more fish, and we all like fish and we all like crab, right, for our Friday night dinner. Yeah. So. <laughs> Wow, this is also a great opportunity for kids, for somebody with mm -hmm. kids to do mm -hmm. because it is easier than, I mean, it's great to teach kids to garden and here's where food comes from. That's a lot of work. Okay. And um, this would be kind of easier and it grows pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So cool, okay, where do you get, when you say you plant them on a reef, what does that mean? Like, you don't go in and attach each little spat. Like, they're smart enough to do some of this on their own if they have the environment. So when we give gardeners the oysters in the beginning, the oysters are already attached. We do that up at our work site up in Gloucester Point. Right. Um, we have a, our work site on the campus of the Virginia Institute of Marine Science. Mm -hmm. So we have eight 800 gallon tanks up there and that's where we put all of our recycled shells after they go through a, a extensive cleaning process and curing process. We put those in our tanks and then we introduce oyster larvae in the stage of an oyster's life cycle where they're ready to attach to something. Okay. So it's otherwise, what they do instinctively, yes. but they don't in the wild have necessarily enough reef now, right? I mean, part of it is it isn't there for them to attach to. Right, it's a, a yeah, there's a, a lack of substrate out there, which is why the See, oyster that's population. That's what I was saying, but in English. <laughs> <laughs> There's, um, so that's why the oyster population declined because all the little baby oyster larvae were swimming around looking for something hard to attach to and um, all of the shell, which because was what they Because we're taking like. them out and we're eating them exactly. and not necessarily putting them all back. Right. Exactly. So once we give them their oysters and they grow them, then we'll, when we plant them, we just actually take them just like this and we just put them on a reef. So we plant them and it's a sanctuary reef so they won't be harvested, they'll be safe there, They'll continue to grow and uh, reproduce and it only takes an oyster a year to reproduce so even while the like while Claire still has her oysters hanging she'll have them for about a year over a year um, and they have will have spawned and reproduced in her backyard oh mm -hmm. my gosh so it helps kind of create a natural oyster population in the gardener's backyard also mm -hmm. so and then this is sanctuary so these are gonna live reproduce and keep cleaning the bay um, but people could learn how to do this and also grow their own oysters. Yes. Or, you know, use. It would take up a lot, a lot more time and space. But what a great opportunity. So let's talk about where you get the shells because commercial harvesters are, are taking them out of the environment. So how do you build a reef? How do you get the shells for them to attach to? So we, uh, Chesapeake Bay Foundation also runs a shell recycling program. Uh, currently we have over 50 restaurants that participate as well as um, multiple oyster roast organizations. And we provide everything that they would need. So for an oyster roast, for example, we'll bring um, bushel baskets and signs so that way oyster roast goers know to put their shells in these oh. designated baskets. Um, and the same thing goes for the restaurants. So we provide the restaurants with five gallon buckets with screw on lids so that way the buckets oh, that's nice. can be, yeah. <laughs> that way the buckets can know, be stacked. Seafood and, doesn't smell good right. leftover in a day or so. And a lot of people, you know, if you're serving your oysters Rockefeller in the shell, you've got stuff that stays. Exactly. You know, if you're just shucking it clean, that's one thing, but even that's not pretty. Mm -hmm. Right. And volunteers, you know, if they have a small car, um, they're not limited then because they have, they know they have a lid. So if it tips right. over, it won't spill. <laughs> Um, and you do have volunteers go around and pick these up. Yes, that's all, a commitment. All wow. of our restaurants are um, 
re uh, volunteer driven, so we could not do it without them. So who are some of the restaurants, and I want to, I know you have a lot, but in Hampton specifically. Sure. So we have Dead Rise participating, um, Paradise Ocean Club, and Crab House. Crab Town. Crab Town. Oh, that's Crab wonderful. Crab Town. <laughs> yeah, big seafood restaurants that would uh, have a lot of oyster, oyster shells yes. available. And so it is extra work for the restaurant. I mean, they have to not just dump everything into the trash, but pay attention to what uh, they, they can recycle. Right. What a great thing they're doing. That's wonderful. And Claire picks up from, right. from those restaurants. And some Do other you? members of our Hampton Waterways Restoration Project group help pick up the shells. Well, Claire, do you want to talk a little bit about the Waterways Restoration Project? Is that kind of what got you in this? Or did your work with the Bay Foundation um, bring out the Waterways <laughs> Restoration Group? I know there's a lot of intersections between Clean City there Commission is. There's and There's a lot of overlap because we're all on the same page as far as trying to um, clean the bay and make Hampton a, a better and more beautiful and, and healthier place. So uh, I've been double-hatted or triple-hatted or whatever for, for quite a number of years. But certainly um, part of Hampton Clean Cities Commission, uh, their mission is to try to, again, enhance the beauty and the cleanliness and the health of, of the city of Hampton. And so Hampton Waterways Restoration Project is one of their committees focuses specifically on um, making Hampton's waterways more swimmable and fishable. You know, that's so important when you think of Clean City Commission grew out of Keep America Beautiful, which right. was sort of anti-litter, but in a waterfront community. And we have 124 miles of navigable waterfront, plus some creeks that you couldn't put a boat in. I mean, all the stuff is mm -hmm. going to end up in the water at some point. Right. One heavy rain and um, anything someone littered on the ground didn't think was a problem still is. Right. But you know, it, it, it might understand a little bit more that it is a problem for marine life, for choking off, you know, pipes for causing animals um, problems. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, okay, how can people volunteer if they're interested in this program? So if they're interested in any of our programs, we, like I said, we're completely volunteer driven from the shower cycling to the oyster gardening to just our daily activities um, with planting oysters, planting reef balls. Um, so just getting in contact with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation um, with me um, in particular, that would be the best way okay. or some of my um, other co-workers and we can just get you set up with whatever you're interested in. This would be a great problem. I used to do Cub Scouts a lot. This would be a great Cub Scout project if you had a family who was on the water and all the kids could help take care of it. The family wouldn't have to do everything. What a great, or Girl Scouts or any kind of, you know, youth organization because it's so educational. Actually, oh. all of our cages are built by Eagle Scouts. This oh, is, awesome. Yeah. So it's an Eagle Scout project that um, they, they take on. So it's, it's great involvement too. Cool. And Hampton City School kids have mm -hmm. been, you know, each year they've been growing oysters and then at the end of the year, this past June, um, they came out to the Elizabeth Lake Reef and planted their oysters. So, which is a really awesome program for kids. Not only does it fit in with the STEM education exactly. program in the schools, which is really important, but it, it gives the kids something hands-on. And um, I, I say my best paycheck is that week when the kids come out to plant those oysters because the excitement and the enthusiasm is just contagious. So it's well, great know, to get the kids out and doing something like that, like you said. To teach kids science, you have to show them. It's like an experiment. Right. It is a you know, year long or nine month, however long they do this experiment and they can see the results. And it's completely different than trying to read about something in a book and right. memorize it. Kids, kids experience things and they learn mm -hmm. much, much better. And so it does help with their SOLs for science, with understanding mm -hmm. concepts and with environmental stewardship right. and all of the other factors that, that oysters influence. Well, thank you. We need to wrap up. Is there anything else you all want to say before we close? Um, just if anybody el else would like to um, help grow oysters, our Hampton Waterways Restoration Project group has uh, a host cage at um, Dandy Haven Marina and at Sunset Boating Center and we'd love to have you join us. That's wonderful, because many fun of us don't live on oysters. the water, right. but we want to help. So if you're interested, please call Hampton Clean City Commission, and we can get you set up to okay. come out and help out.
Thank you. Thank you both for coming. Thanks, I learned Robin. a lot. Yeah. And thank you for watching. I hope you've learned a lot about how oysters help the health of the bay and how you can help the health of the oysters and have that trickle up influence. Thanks for watching.